How's it going, my side friends? My name is Gary, and this is my channel, Weakest of Weeks. If you're a first-time viewer, I appreciate you clicking on the video, and definitely consider subscribing, especially if you love how-to sob-related videos, because I have a ton of those. And today's video, well, guess what? It is no different. So, cutting right to the meat and potatoes of this video, we're going to be doing a fuel pump. This car has had a habitual P0089 fuel pump code in a previous video. I thought I would be able to get away with just doing a fuel pressure sensor. This is a returnless style system and check the comments of that video for more explanation on that because a couple subscribers actually commented some really worthwhile stuff explaining how this system works. But basically, I replaced that fuel pressure sensor. Worked for a little bit, but unfortunately that coat has come back multiple times. It's come up one week, I've cleared it, and then two days later it's come back up. So drivability of the car has pretty much been the same and unaffected, but unfortunately I think the fuel pump is on its way out. Now in the past, when I first got this car three years ago, the fuel gauge would bounce all over the place or it just wouldn't work. So I did drop the fuel tank, I did not do a video about it, but all I ended up doing was dropping the fuel tank to replace the fuel level sender. Unfortunately now, three years later, getting that P0089 code in, I think the fuel pump is now up for replacement. So today, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that fuel pump and I'll take your friends along for the journey. <laughs> Step one, I already completed, but I consider step one, jacking the vehicle up and supporting it on jack stands if you're doing this on the concrete. Now, if you have the luxury of a lift, definitely choose that route. But I imagine a lot of my DIY-friendly subscribers are gonna be doing the exact same method as I and rolling around on the cold, hard concrete. So make sure you do your homework, supporting it properly, give it the good old shake test. If you have ramps, I highly recommend using those so the weight of the vehicle is pretty much on the wheels. However, my vehicle is so low that I would have to have taken the bumpers off just to get it onto these ramps. And then because the tire drapes down so far when you jack the vehicle up, my jack doesn't go high enough to just kind of slide it underneath here. So I'm stuck using jack stands. That's not a big deal. I have it jacked up pretty good and high so I can get in and out from underneath here. Make sure you do your homework on how to support it and how to support it safely. Now step two is to look up in your owner's manual. This vehicle is a 2008 Saab 93 Aero, but this same process will work for any 03 and up 93 Aero or not Aero. Refer to your owner's manual, my 2008, it's fuse number two and it is a 20 amp and it's located in the front most relay box right in front of the battery. So just remove this trim cover here above the battery. Now mine is missing the two trim tabs otherwise just need a screwdriver set the side lift up and out on this little intake. Now this exposes this little relay box push in the tabs swing it up set that to the side that gives us access to this little relay and fuse box and we're looking for 20 amp yellow fuse right there. So we'll go ahead and pull that now. What we're trying to achieve here is to lessen the pressure and use up as much fuel as possible in the fuel lines by pulling this fuse. We're basically telling the vehicle to not utilize the fuel pump. It's gonna suck up the fuel that's in the rails and we're gonna let it run until it starts running like crap because then it's running out of gas basically. So this will make it a lot safer when we go to undo the fuel pump and crack open the lines. There should, in theory, be less pressure and less gas to splash us in the face. So take a little extra time, pull this fuse, run the vehicle for a little bit, and then we'll be ready to move on to actual disassembly underneath the vehicle. We're idling. Now we're ready to pull that fuel pump fuse. side so we don't lose it now we wait so this may take some time now even though I have the garage open I am gonna skedaddle out of here I don't want to be sucking up any carbon monoxide so I'm gonna listen wait for it to stall out or come close to stalling and then shut the vehicle off so I think we used up as much gas as physically possible now I will say if you have the luxury like myself to plan this repair out do it wisely. Drive the car around until you have basically no gas in the gas tank because all that weight 
that's suspended up there is coming right down. So if you're in a situation where you just filled the tank up, you drove the car around, the fuel pump died, you towed it home, now you're planning to do it in the driveway, well, you better get your siphoning skills on and drain some of that fuel because that is a lot of weight. Good idea to unplug the battery. So we'll disconnect both the negative and the positive terminals. Next step, we're gonna be unbolting this exhaust. This is an aftermarket exhaust, so we're gonna be splitting it right here and right here. If you have a stock exhaust, you may be stuck with unbolting it in front of the resonator. I don't remember if there's an additional clamp here on a stock exhaust, if it's four cylinder or V6. So me, I have the luxury of unbolting it here, two 17 millimeter bolts and another two 17 millimeter bolts right there before it splits to the dual exhaust on this arrow. So I'm gonna be doing that, and then that should give us access to the fuel tank straps, the harnesses, and the fuel filler neck that we have to unbolt. While I'm under here, I'm gonna start spraying all these exhaust hangers with some WD-40 or some PB blasts. That way it makes removal of this stuff that much easier. There's one right here and multiple ones somewhere over there. Yeah, there's one right there. So all this stuff I'm gonna spray, then I'll zip off that other exhaust clamp and we'll see if we can finagle this thing off. The BFM, the big flipping mallet. I'm hoping I can smack this and just get this little center section out and not even have to mess with this dual exhaust, but not getting my hopes up. Now this is on the passenger side of my left-hand drive US spec car, and this is what we're gonna be focusing on next. Here they make it easy for you. They have a little symbol guy there denoting this is the fuel line. So we need to disconnect this. There is a electrical line right here. Now mine, I noticed this the last time I did this to do just the fuel level sender was this wire here, which is outside of this loom. So that's very bizarre. I don't know why that is. We'll go ahead Get a screwdriver, pull down on this. Go ahead, disconnect this fuel line. I have a drain pan just in case. I have a face shield that I'm gonna wear just in case we get any spatter so I don't get any fuel in my eyes. So this is what's so weird. If this was factory, this wouldn't have been here. So there must have been an issue at some point. Very strange. I have that disconnected, not that it really does much because of that excess wire, but that gives us more space to get the fuel line clip into here. One thing I highly recommend doing, and it's something I actually forgot before I detached that fuel line at the tank, is go ahead in the engine bay and relieve the fuel pressure at the Schrader valve here. So point of reference, this is the passenger side of my US spec 9.3. You have the fuel pressure sensor here and then a small protection cap. You just unscrew that. That gives you access to the Schrader valve. You can actually just get your fingernail in here or just a small screwdriver and push that in. And what that'll do, it'll bleed off any excess fuel pressure as well as some excess fuel. So once you do that, just put the cap back on so you don't lose it. And then you can go ahead and undo that fuel line at the fuel tank. All right. Glad we're wearing that face shield. We'll let that drain out a little bit.
clip's a little worse for wear, so we'll be replacing this one. This is where we just disconnected the fuel lines, follow it right across this strap. Now on the back side of this passenger side, we need to undo this fuel filler neck. So we'll get this as loose as possible. So because there's not a lot of room here, the rear sway bar runs through here. I mean, if you have small arm and hands, you could probably get in here and wiggle it. But right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. It's definitely loose and it looks like it's about to pop off. I mean, it's a good sign I can like wiggle it here. Now, if this is stuck, I recommend taking a hook tool and sticking it in here, running it around this bead and it should break this loose. The front straps are much easier to get to. This one right here, where this electrical stuff was. Now with that out of the way, it gives us better access. And then the fourth and final one, the front most one on the driver's side is right here. So we'll go ahead and zip those off and we'll do it as safely as possible. I know there's not a lot of fuel in this tank, so there's not a whole heck of a lot of weight, but this is awkward nonetheless. So I'm gonna get a floor jack that's right here underneath here supporting most of the weights and then I'll zip off these front ones slowly lower this down these are 13 millimeter bolts for the straps I'm going to lower this exhaust that way it gives us more swing down this way The fuel filler right there, that did pop out like I wanted it to. Here is all the nonsense up at the top. And when I tilted it, this fuel line that was connected right into here started dripping a little more fuel out. That's no big deal. Peed a little bit on the concrete, I have to clean that up. I'll need to lower it a little bit more, slide it this way, and then it should fall right down. Looks like we have an EVAP line right here. So it runs all the way up. I don't know if this goes to the fuel filler neck somewhere along the top, but this is a hard line. So it connects into here, and we'll need to undo this clip right here. Here's that fuel tank, and unfortunately, I broke that mystery wire, so I'll have to take a look and see what's going on with that. Ah, I see. So it looks like there is one of these pins that broke. They gooped in some RTV of some sort, and instead of it going through here, they pulled it out and just directly connected it. And I remember this from the last time I was in here, so this definitely was not something that I did. Uh, but I'll go ahead and make it right as much as I can. This line wraps around and it actually goes into up top here. So there's a rather large connector that we need to remove. At this point, I'm not too worried about breaking some of this stuff because I do have replacement clips. This stuff is good to replace anyways. Undo the pigtail, small tab, push over, then this tab lifts up. This tab is very simple, lift up, that wiggles free. This gives us access to the fuel tank lock ring. So I'm gonna use the old school screwdriver and hammer trick. I'm just gonna beat around the ring till it loosens up. Obviously there are specialty tools to do this that are much safer than this. So I highly recommend spending the money using the tools, kind of a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing, because in my case I am having metal on metal, which can spark and you are dealing with fuel and fuel vapor, which can easily ignite. So have a fuel extinguisher close by and we'll go ahead and knock this ring loose. get this close by. Because this fuel pump tank seal is a replaceable thing, even if it looks good, I'm just gonna 
cut this and get it out of the way for now. Just gonna let this sit here for a couple minutes and drain all the excess fuel that's stored in here out back into the tank. Let me show you my least favorite part of disassembly of this fuel pump. So there is a line that it's probably hard to see just kind of how I have this, but this line actually travels down and goes into the tank. So if you follow it right there. So right now, even though we disconnected everything externally from the pump, we cannot easily undo that clip for this line. It's actually way up in there. So the way the hat of this fuel pump is, it is a bear to get to. So I have a screwdriver here. I'm going to push in on each side of these clip tabs and kind of force it out that way. And then I just need to make sure that it doesn't drop and fall into the fuel tank. I'm going to do the two screwdriver attempt here. Aha. See what I'm saying? This line I just removed from that fuel pump assembly goes deep down into this tank. Where it goes, I have no idea. I'm not about to find out. That is not fun to remove, and it's not going to be fun to put back on. So for now, I'm just going to set it like that so it doesn't suck and fall back in there. And granted, if it does, you can just easily stick your hand in there, but I'd rather not stick my hands into gas. Here's what we're left with. Obviously, the fuel pump assembly. The fuel float that I put on three years ago, this is a doorman part, which I'll link it in the description. It's actually in really good shape. The original one, you could definitely tell the contacts were wore out and there's dead spots. So it would only work at half tank or less. This one, once I replaced it, it's worked beautifully. It's just unfortunately now the internal fuel pump inside this is now going bad, or at least I presume. And then this is the original fuel tank. It's pretty dirty, but not terrible. Definitely not the worst I've seen. And then you can see some sediment in there, which is pretty normal. And there is a plastic clip, or at least remnants of one. I will fish that out. I'll give the tank a good look over to get any crud out of there before we place in the other fuel pump. So now is the part that any sane person would tell you to go ahead and replace this with a brand new unit, a brand new OEM one, or potentially a very high-end aftermarket version. Now, I don't know what fuel pumps are the best for these cars outside of the original equipment ones. If you have any experience, any good experience with an aftermarket fuel pump, drop a comment down below and tell the folks what brand that you're running, how many miles you have on that fuel pump to date. This one, I'm actually going to be rebuilding. So at this point, I'll link the video in the description of rebuilding this. This video will pick up once the old one is rebuilt. A few moments later. Not sure how well this is gonna work, but because I don't wanna stick my hand into a thing of fuel, I'm gonna try to fish this junk out of here and I presume this stuff is rust so I have a magnetic tool and we'll try to fish it around and catch any of this rust look at that it's actually working very well and I'm of course going to clean up any rust around the top of the tank here We're ready to toss in a rebuilt or new fuel assembly into the tank. So in my case, if you watched the last video, I ended up rebuilding this factory unit. I ended up upgrading with an AEM unit. If you're interested in that rebuild, click the link in the description. Or if you're replacing just the entire assembly, I highly recommend to go with specifically an original equipment manufacturer and not some cheap off-brand. So for starters, point of mention, this hose that runs inside I have a new fuel line clip. I set the tank O-ring in place. I put a little oil on there. Probably not required, but it's just something that I like to do just to ensure it's gonna seal properly. Big point I mentioned, make sure this hose running through the center of that O-ring because you don't want to attach everything, hook this clamp up, go to drop it in here and realize you didn't route this hose in the center of this O-ring and then you gotta pull it all back apart. I have an assortment of Dorman clamps. There's the part number right there and you can find this just about at any local auto parts store it comes with 3 8 and 5 16 so the black ones are the larger 3 8 the smaller 5 16 ones are what we'll be using for this connector and i have one already in place just sitting there ready to go now we're ready to 
put this assembly back into the fuel tank and I did clean that out. I cleaned around the ring. Yes, there's still some trash around, but I don't want to disturb that too much until I get this assembly back into place and then I'll probably take a shot back. But I didn't want all that crud to go back in there. So with the help of that magnetic tool sticking down in there, clean it up pretty good. There is still a little sediment in there, so I might hit that up one more time. But outside of that, this assembly is ready to go back in. All right, so orientation, it should only go one way. The fuel float is gonna be facing forward in this case, so towards the filler neck right there. And then if you kind of forget your orientation, just know there is a divot in this fuel tank where this molded line falls right into place. So it's gotta go a specific way. I do apologize, it is practically impossible to get a good camera angle of reinstallation of this hose, but that clip is now in place, and we are good to snake this fuel float in there, make sure there's no binding of any sorts, and then lower this assembly fully in. make sure all these tabs are where they need to be and that this lock ring is starting to go underneath each corner of those tabs and ever so gracefully work this ring around clockwise. And the lock ring is fully seated once the hump here matches up with that. So it can be tricky. You kind of hit a roadblock. You'll likely have to give it some little extra oomph to get it over onto this hump. Just make sure all of these are lined up. Every corner, yep. And now I'm gonna vacuum this up real quick. Tank is now shot vacked and we can just set and push this into the recess. This connector, if you removed it, which you should have. It is a 5 8 clip, numbers at the top. Again, this is something that your local auto parts store should carry in stock. This one is a two pack. And there's the clip. So that is nice and solid. This actually is the hose that's already connected in the vehicle, so we're not going to worry about that just yet. If you're able to see it, I did remove this vapor canister, which goes right here. Since I'm in here and it is above the tank, these can cause a lot of emission system issues with check engine lights. So it's like 30 some dollars US, so I'm just gonna replace it anyway. Since the tanks drop, this is cheap insurance to prevent any emission check engine light codes coming up in the near future. Tank is roughly where I need it to be underneath the car and I have the jack underneath it. Now, because I am replacing this emissions vent solenoid that typically resides right there, that's the old one, I just kind of have it mocked up. This is the replacement I picked up at my local auto parts store. This is the part number, CardQuest brand. So I'm gonna toss this in real quick and then I have a new 5 8 fuel clip that we'll be throwing into that line as well. Easy as that. If you're wondering my solution for that wire that bypassed this main fuel pump assembly connector, well, this was my solution. I ended up having some Deutsch connectors. They're nice weather pack connectors, and it'll look somewhat OEM. Definitely a lot less sketchy than the last person who worked on here that bypassed this connector. Now, I understand the reasoning for it because there is a pin broke off here. I took some time, I looked to see if I could disassemble this connector, but it didn't look easy to do, so this was my solution. At least now you can fully disconnect this safely. Now we're very close to jacking this up and putting it back where it needs to go. Point of mention for this fuel filler neck, it's gonna be tricky to capture it on camera and also jack this up at an angle to get it on here. What I ended up doing is putting a little bit of oil, nothing too crazy on there to basically lube that up. So if it gets close, it should kind of slide into place. We cannot forget about this emissions hose. This connects right here. 
and we will need to add a new fuel clip to that and it takes just like the other ones the 5 16 fuel clip so we'll go ahead and attach that into place all this other stuff will kind of come to us as we lift this up and we'll have some slack to reattach the fuel line and all these other electrical connectors. An emissions hose is attached. Pretty much had to do it blindly. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. So now I'm going to jack it up and probably won't be able to see it, but I'm going to try to get this fuel filler neck attached. Here's where we're at right now. Very close. Just need to jack the tank up a little bit more. That should be enough to get that filler neck onto this part of the tank. Before we get the tank fully up in here, we're going to connect this vent tube. Push that in all the way. Some more fuel line clips. That is in there. And then I added some zip ties because the original connectors are long gone. So I'm going to leave that loose for now until we get the tank up a little bit higher. Then we'll tighten these down. The tank is pretty much in its home where it needs to reside. One thing that's pretty difficult is this rear sway bar. So you have to like swing the tank and get this side in first. And then also trying to guide this in is rather tricky. And then lastly, this vent hose, there is that white clip. That's pretty tricky if it pops out to clip it back into, but it's manageable. How I ended up doing that was a long pair of angled needle nose pliers. And I basically just hooked this nylon line here and just forced it down and it found its home inside that clip. And then of course this fuel filler neck just uses a flat blade screwdriver to tighten so that's good and tight. Now we are on to these connectors right down here. So looking at my connectors left, I just realized how much of an idiot I am. These right here, these two, connect to the top of the fuel pump assembly. Dang it! Now I gotta lower this again. Don't make that mistake I did. I was so focused on the nylon lines, I didn't even think of the electrical connectors. Man, that sucks. Let me correct that real quick and then we'll go back to the actual ones that need connected down right here. Thank goodness this actually wasn't that terrible. So I lowered the tank down a little bit, still have the fuel filler in it and everything attached on the backside, and it gave me enough space to get my hand up in there to attach the electrical connectors. And it's gonna be impossible to see, but there's one of them. And you can see that one is now connected as well. Oh, thank God, dodged a bullet on that. But definitely learn from my mistakes and connect those fuel pump connectors before you lift this up. And if you remember, those are 13 millimeters for these tank straps. Even though these are like weatherproof connectors, I'm gonna squeeze some dielectric grease in here just in case. And same thing for this newly added Deutsch connector. And then I'm gonna add a zip tie just as an extra piece to secure this in place. Just need to tighten this final 13 millimeter tank strap bolt. And then it's a final systems check before we go ahead and start it. Now temporarily I will start it without this little exhaust piece in here and it's just gonna be dumping out after the resonator. But I just wanna make sure everything is operating the way it should before we throw this piece of exhaust back into place. All right, jack is out. Now we're on to the final systems check. Tank straps are in fact tight. Electrical harnesses are plugged in. Fuel line is plugged in, it's nice and tight. The emissions stuff is plugged in with new clips. This one, I am missing the original connector. So of course I did have to zip tie it. So it's a little less OEM than it should be. However, that works out perfectly fine. Going to the back. The fuel filler neck is attached. It's seated really well. Clamp is fully tightened and there's nothing out of the ordinary underneath here. So I think we are good to put that fuse back in and give it its first start. Time to put the fuel pump fuse back where it needs to go. I'm gonna throw this cover on real quick, reattach the battery and put all these covers back on real quick. All right, it's officially the moment of truth now. 
I will say the car on its first startup is probably not going to be happy. It's got to go through pretty much a relearn phase. And because we did crack open the fuel lines to do this, we're going to have to prime the fuel pump a couple times. See what happens. Officially, after doing the fuel pump, I've done 225.1 miles. Now, I did fill up the tank, not 100% complete full, just in case something were to happen, but the gas gauge did register perfectly fine. Now, once you get to a certain point, I think it's under 40 miles, like 35 or something. Yeah, so right now there's 37 miles left to the tank, estimated and now it's tripping the low fuel light. So this is operating how it should. Now I'm gonna fill it up and I'll show you that the gas gauge will go to full and that it is fully operational and I have not cleared any check engine lights whatsoever in those 221 miles. So, so far so good. Now we'll fill it up. We'll make sure the gas gauge works 100% to full. Just filled up. I don't know if it's 100% full because the pump maxed out at $50, which is kind of interesting, but gas right now, is about a dollar more than it has been since the last time I filled up, so that's kind of crazy. So 12.1 gallons, $50, so we'll see where that gets us. But that looks like right around a full tank. Awesome. Go ahead and start things up. Perfect. So that is gonna wrap it up on today's video of the install and upgrade of the fuel pump assembly on my new Gen 9.3. Hopefully this video gave you the confidence to go about this install yourself. If you do go ahead and do it, use the links in the description. That way you utilize the exact same parts that worked out for my install. If this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, consider subscribing for the upcoming sub adventures. That being said, I'll catch your friends next time.